it's a long history to this report. Uh, there's been a number of people that have been playing a big role in this. Um, and we actually managed to get the cover of the report that came out in 2006. And I was glad to see uh, in the uh, list of RSVPs a number of people who were involved in the 2006 project. And we also have as respondents some of the colleagues that were there and who would also be reflecting on what this report presents. Um, it, you know, the, the 2006 report obviously is a good one to look at and to measure where we are today as a country in 2023. Uh, it focused then, uh, and I think uh, it was unusual, uh, I suppose one should say, because we are used to referring to macroeconomic trends, etc., etc. But I think there's a sense that, look, you know, there's a lot more thinking going on around social issues and social trends, and hence uh, the kind of various themes that we identified in that 2006 report. Uh, it concluded that South Africa had been transformed on the basis of constitutional imperatives, and uh, this had helped towards nation building and reconciliation. It cited public, positive public outcomes, uh, transformation in politics, social economic, and culture. But, uh, and I think that recording in progress. The buts were obviously very important, that it, uh, the persistent inequality, crime, racism, uneven migration, etc., etc. So, in July 2019, the, the project partners that Tipakazi has mentioned had co-hosted the 25 Years of Democracy. And, you know, the conference teams look at the past, the present, and the future. I'm not going to go into the details of that. But what was important was that the same uh, uh, partners then decided to let's take up the, uh, the cudgels, uh, in a sense, of reflecting on where our society is going, where these various macro social um, indicators were. Uh, on your right hand side is the list of colleagues that were involved in the project, and um, assuming most of them, if not all of them, uh, are present today, apart from those that have had some clashes with meetings and things. Um, it did a, the normal literature review. It made use of qualitative and quantitative data. It did a, a round of interviews and through on different disciplines and areas specialized. So many thanks to the team that worked on it. Um, it built obviously on the research findings of the 2006 report, but it also looks at um, some some key dimensions especially the, HD, the human development indicator and the macroeconomic changes that impact on macro-social trends. There are various sections that cover important developments such as structural changes that we need to be um, keeping in mind that we are, that, we, that have occurred in the global context, uh, given uh, also the experience and the trauma of state capture, the growing influence of digital technologies in all aspects of our work uh, and pleasure and, uh, and socializing and the new research on social cohesion in South Africa. It looked at democratic consolidation rather than focusing on transitional policy outcomes and institutional changes, which were obviously the focus of the first, uh, the 2006 report. Um, and at the time when we wrote this, um, uh, when it came together towards the end of last year, um, the 2022 report also was reflecting on the kind of social compacting processes that the president was trying to lead. Its structure, um, its um, you know, uh, major trends. Uh, you know, the first chapter is actually a very good synopsis of what we need to look at. Then it goes into social structure and social mobility, diversity around race and language, diversity. Uh, sorry, that's a different thing, around migration, social cohesion, and organizing social life and social network. So I'm going to basically talk to the broad outline of what it does, so that when you're looking through the report, you get a chance, you've got a guide to how to manage the, the report itself. The aim, obviously, was to investigate socioeconomic structural changes and relate them to social conditions in South Africa. So the macro trends that I identified in Chapter 1 have a significant impact on democratic consolidation, social cohesion, and nation building. And that it's important to identify, uh, to focus on them. And as I mentioned, important recent developments, AI being, uh, and the whole digital economy transition, really, really important was, is, was and is low carbon economic policy shifts and the impact of debates and discourse around the just transition to a low carbon future and response to state capture. 
Um, this chapter is about the four main themes, economic development, um, the whole social program, um, governance, and so forth. Now, chapter two is quite an interesting one because it looks at the social structure and social mobility. This provides quite a comprehensive assessment of South Africa's social structure from 2003 to 20 by looking at race, class, gender, and age, contextual issues, uh, such as digital and policy shift. Um, and then it looks at poverty and inequality trends, income and social mobility, small SMMEs, and the relevance of education and entrepreneurship. It then concludes by providing political rec uh, policy recommendations, which is obviously quite important for the colleagues that are gathered here today. Um, the, the diversity chapter on demographics of race and language highlights that at its core, post apartheid South Africa continues to be characterized by structural racism and unequal power relations based on race, class, and gender, by digging deep into a lot of these factors. Now, you know, this is this is one of the challenges I even face when trying to uh, prepare the, the presentation, that there are a lot of issues covered in this report, and, and all I can do is highlight some of it. So, um, but please do go into these aspects, because they, they have tried to bring together as much of the recent data that they have available. Um, and then obviously it shows the, the, the need, uh, the areas that we need to be focusing on as far as policy lessons are concerned. Um, the population by race, we've got a bit of a breakdown, but I think that the uh, right hand corner is quite an interesting one about which part of our, so the race remains a factor, is a, a central defining factor of South Africa's socio-economic situation. 